Okay, I've just received the iPad Mini 5G. I want to give you a co direct comparison to the iPad Pro 5G this year's version, as well as the previous version of the iPad Mini, as well as the iPad Classic. So we're going to try all of these devices and compare them. I'm also running a, a 12 Pro and we'll see the device performance and also on a, a low entry I um, Android I also have the, the benchmark Nvidia GPU tablet shield Nvidia shield but unfortunately that doesn't support Android 10 so it won't be participating in the 3D marks let's get this open and have a quick look at the device itself so as you can see, I've gone for the mini smart uh, folio. See, see how that wraps around instead of, you know, uh, your own previous generation. The previous generation had this kind of mapping, you know, uh, uh, magnetic uh, clip on, and it was pretty good, uh, but it wasn't very stable for kind of balancing. But um, let's see how it, things have improved. And of course, with the iPad, Pro it's a little bit bigger so it's a bit more clumsy as well when it comes to things like that so let's have a quick look at the actual mini smart folio so the reason that I kind of went for this was because of the color matching and also the um, to protection on the rear as well which is always useful so okay so as you can see this is <clears throat> the iPad mini 6th generation Wi-Fi and cellular it's USB-C it's got 5G sub 6G uh, cellular te technology depending on your location I do have a 5G sim so I'm going to test these as tethering in the uh, in the real world as well so the model number is the A2568 so let's give it a go Okay, as usual, it's nice experience opening any of the Apple devices. And the initial kind of impressions, the weight feels much heavier than the previous generation, which I'm surprised at, but they're actually very similar. Um, so let's get the case off. So that's a much prettier device. As you can see, it's much more edge to edge. Obviously it's got the fingerprint on the, the, the top power button, which is replacing the, the thumb on the bottom. The actual, well, you can see straight away the, um, it, the, the actual base itself. It's got very similar kind of style to the previous generation. Um, so let's have a quick look. It's, 92% battery so you know that's not too bad I also have with it I've got both the the current gen generation pencil and the previous generation uh, pencil as well which obviously has the US uh, the the pairing via the lightning which is obviously not going to be great for the fact that we've got USB-C on this one so let's get going let's get the the setup the new iPad quickly Straight away it's gone into to the black mode. Now I need to put the passcode in. Straight away setting up the iPad, nice and simple. You can see there's no SIM at the moment. I'm guessing your SIM is in the standard point, which I'm gonna give it a go and see, see how it is. Um, obviously it's gonna take a few minutes to activate. So I'm gonna just put this on the side and we'll, just use the case to see how good that is. So it locks into place, which is pretty impressive. Uh, it's obviously the mag technology, which is keeping that attached. 
Um, it's now obviously asking for my touch ID, so doing my finger print scan on the touch component. Seems easy enough to train it. I, I don't actually use um, the one on the, the iPad. I just don't see the, the value, but it's it's pretty good. So lift now the edge of your finger and top button repeatedly. Edge of my finger. Okay, one finger done. We'll do the right uh, extra fingers later on. Set up later, which isn't that responsive, but give it a go. So obviously when I close it, it auto turns off. You've got the single camera on the back. We've got flash. If we quickly put them side by side with the previous generation. The cameras are is considerably bigger. Obviously you've lost the volume buttons, which typically um, people don't use that much. Um, and they've added those to the top, which is fine with the power. Obviously it's got quite a lot of heat um, distribution. So we should see, for, especially for the, for the graphics, it should hopefully leverage that a little bit more. It feels a lot more solid. Obviously you don't get the nice curve now it's it's the, in the new style of the iPads, so let's leave this going and finish its setup process. Again, obviously the old classic one is fingerprint and then launch, but I do like the rose gold, which you didn't really get the option on for this generation. It seemed a bit more w w washed out in comparison to the classic which has been on the last few generations. So still waiting for this to finish. It's connected into Wi-Fi. That was easy enough. Okay, so let's keep, keep that going. Let's have a quick look at what we get in the box. I'm guessing within here we'll get the, um, the standard pin to, to get things out, which doesn't look like it actually is including that. Oh no, there is something in there. Nope, we have to use one that we've already got. Maybe it's reducing the weight a little bit. So, um, standard USB. It'd be interesting to see what um, the difference is and the, how much power is actually coming out of this. Obviously the 100 Watts pa uh, voltage pass through is what you get with the the iPad Pro, <clears throat> and I do switch between them. Um, as far as using one cable, which powers the Mac, um, which I, I've got uh, the standard MacBook. I've got the MacBook Air as well. Um, so both of those use the same share USB C on the side. Obviously, this is an M1 based uh, device, so so is this. This is M1, so we've got two M1s. Okay, took a little bit longer than we expected. I actually lost 20% battery, but actually we're in a good position now. We've got both the old and the new iPad minis. I'm going to run them at the same time. Three, two, one. They're kicking off. I'm also going to run it on all the other devices including an SE and also an XR and of course the thing so we can see actually started up quicker sorry I'm not sure started up quicker 10 frames per second so I don't know why that is same problem here 12 13 well it's going 13 14 frames per second that's good 17 on the um, the 12 pro 31 as we were before on the iPad Pro and then the, the traditional one actually is not doing bad it's you know 20 frames per second the the new iPad mini is is kind of getting up to that 20 frames per second area so you know actually it's not bad obviously this is running extreme 
So two extremes. It's a lot smoother. This okay. So it's finished off. The SE is not even finished running. So wild, wildlife extreme for both the two minis. The final results are one five four two for for the previous generation, two six zero oh, five for the brand new twenty twenty one five G. Now we were able to compare that to the XR, which is one four, which is actually behind the old mini and the iPhone Pro Max, which is coming in at 2.4. So it's actually faster than the Pro Max. And I think that's a good result for the extreme. Of course, the, the undefeatable iPad Pro 12 9 is 5,000. So nearly twice the power as the flagship but actually that puts it into a very reasonable second position for the fastest devices um, in the in these uh, the iPad range. So, you know, I think that's a, a very respectable result. The SE's just rebooted itself halfway through running that Extreme. But if we look at the XR, the XR is obviously running at A12. The iPad uh, 2018 is running at A10. The iPad uh, the iPhone Pro uh, 12 is running a A14 and then of course we're running the M1 on the Apple and both of the both mini devices aren't showing any of their chip shop yet or GPU information which is surprising and then of course the two um, Android devices, Snapdragon 670, and the Samsung is powered by a uh, 850 2GHz octa-core um, G52. So, you know, it's very interesting. You know, the M1 is double the performance at, to, to the Mini 5G. So if you want any me to run any more tests or you're interested in anything, just add into the comments below and I will give you a, a honest benchmark between the two.